Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, here a while back, I decided to reach out to the folks over at Raspad and see if they would be willing to supply me with a Raspad 3 to check out and share with you guys. And luckily enough, they, they agreed and they sent one over. And then I, being a terrible human being, sat on it for like a month, month and a half, way too long. So uh, first, I want to apologize to the folks at Raspad for taking so long to get this content created. Um, but I guess with all of that being said, uh, let's take a look at some of the things that you can do with the Raspad device. But first, uh, let's go ahead and get this thing put together. Okay, guys, this is the Raspad 3 case. Of course, right now we're looking at the 10.1 inch 720p screen. On the back here, we've got uh, some branding, uh, a little bit of information on the bottom, like uh, rated for 15 volts at two amps, so about 30 watts that it can support there. Uh, it's got some ventilation holes, some rubber feet, that's about it. Uh, on the left side uh, of, uh, for looking at the screen here, uh, the left side of this will have a, a one gig ethernet port, uh, some USB ports, a full size HDMI port, a headphone port, I believe this may actually be a headphone microphone uh, combo jack, as well as a barrel jack for power. On the right side, we're gonna have a uh, power button, some volume buttons, as well as a micro SD card slot uh, so that you, if you want to run operating systems on that, you absolutely can. And it can actually swap operating systems without having to remove the back of the case. So let's go ahead and uh, flip this over like so. In fact, on the back, we'll also notice there is a, a, a spot for your GPIO pin wires to come out. So in order to get into this, there are five screws, uh, one in each corner, one in the middle. I've already removed those uh, just for uh, making this video a little simpler. Um, on the inside of the back of the case, there is a fan that I believe you'll have to install. I've had this for a while and honestly, I don't remember. Um, but of course, there's the fan uh, that you'll want to plug in. Uh, this will blow air directly on the CPU uh, of your Raspberry Pi. And then of course, here we go. This is kind of the, the, the main bread and butter of this device. Now I have kind of prepped some of this. Um, like this, this little cable right here will actually plug in to the micro SD card slot on your Raspberry Pi uh, 4. This is for Raspberry Pi 4 devices uh, so that uh, when you plug this in, you'll get uh, access to this micro SD card slot uh, when everything is all buttoned up. Uh, here you can see they've got a controller board where you're gonna plug uh, your Raspberry Pi uh, IO ports, your, your uh, USB, HDMI, uh, Ethernet, those sorts of things uh, will all get plugged into here so you've got access from the outside. Uh, here we can see there's a couple of uh, of speakers. Uh, they actually sound pre pretty good. I mean, they're not amazing, but they're pretty good. Um, and then here we've got a Raspad battery pack. Uh, these use uh, 18650s for a total of 11.1 volts. And uh, on the back here, it says that we've got about 3,200 milliamp hours uh, of power here. Now the Raspad website says that, that should give you about five hours of productivity time uh, using this. But of course that's all going to depend uh, largely on how you use this and whether or not you overclock your Raspberry Pi. So putting this thing together is actually pretty, pretty simple. Um, so here we've got uh, a Raspberry Pi 4, four gig. Uh, I know that this is going to come up in the comments. I know this is not the appropriate uh, heat sink for this. Uh, this is uh, this is just what I had. I didn't have any more C heat sink CPU uh, or CPU heat sinks to put on here. So I may do with what I had. Uh, but basically all we've got to do is just kind of put this thing together. Uh, it's very, very straightforward. So first thing, of course, we're going to plug in just like that. And I'm only gonna put two screws in here uh, just because I, I, I mess with this stuff a lot and uh, I don't, two screws will hold it just fine for my purposes. Okay, so now that we have that plugged or that that screwed together, uh, the rest of it's very, very plug and play. In fact, there's actually one thing I forgot to mention and it's this little guy uh, right here. This is uh, your accelerometer so that if you've got an operating system installed with the correct code, uh, you'll be able to uh, turn the tablet, uh, you know, around, upside down, side to side, whatever, and it should rotate the screen automatically. Uh, what we're gonna do is just come over to here and put this right on here, just like so, and press it all the way down. There we go. So there's your accelerometer installed just like that. Uh, now it's just a matter of uh, plugging in all of uh, the IO. So first let's start over here with this and like that. There's your ethernet uh, pass through there. Um, let's see, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's do our uh, USB type C. This is just a little plug uh, that will go from right here to right here just like 
that, uh, and then we've got a couple of different uh, HDMI cables here uh, that are uh, micro to micro. And what we wanna do is kind of figure out which one is gonna go where. Uh, so these are different lengths and they are built like that on purpose so that you can wrap one around the other. So let's go ahead and just plug this one in uh, right here like so until it clicks in. And then we'll plug this one in on the board over here like that. And then we're gonna follow suit uh, with this other adapter here like that, and then plug this in to here. Now, be careful about where you put these HDMI cables, uh, because if you put it here, uh, or if you put, well, if you, if you cover this hole, you're gonna have a hard time uh, getting that center screw in when we put the back on here. So make sure that that stays available uh, and not covered when we put the back together. And then of course, the last thing we need to do here is plug in uh, our, our power cable here, just like so just like that. So here's where we've got a couple of options, uh, in, in my opinion anyway. Uh, if you knew that you were only gonna run one operating system on this and you didn't wanna mess with it and you wanted the best possible performance, you could then take uh, something like this little uh, SanDisk uh, USB thumb drive, I believe this is a, uh, this is a 128 gig uh, USB drive here that, uh, it, it, again, if you knew that you were only going to run one operating system on here um, and you didn't, you didn't wanna mess with it, you could just plug this right in here. Of course, you'd wanna make sure you've got an operating system uh, installed on there. Uh, put the case, uh, the, 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 the back cover on here and uh, bolt it up and then you would have uh, USB 3 speeds for your operating system to boot from this USB device. Now, on the flip side of that, if you, uh, if you wanted to switch out regularly and use a, uh, a micro SD card, you could obviously do like they recommend on their website and not put this USB port in here or this USB plug in here, but then put all of your operating systems on micro SD cards and swap these out on the fly of course, after powering down appropriately and whatnot, but uh, you could uh, do it that way as well and put a micro SD card slot in here and be done with it. Now, the one thing I'm actually not sure about, it should work. If you're willing to give up one of your USB ports over here on the side, uh, you could uh, do the same thing as with the micro SD card slot, but just plug in your USB port instead of over here. Uh, just plug it in over here instead. Uh, of course, once the case is on, you always wanna make sure that uh, you don't have anything plugged into this when you try to uh, put the, the, the back of the case on or take the back of the case off. Uh, just make sure that you you don't have anything plugged in when you're when you're assembling or disassembling. So just something to keep in mind there. Uh, that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. Uh, I think I am going to, uh, I've got a couple more of these on the way so that we can uh, swap this out uh, on the fly uh, to boot from the USB over here. So then let's go ahead and grab uh, the back of the case here. Now, don't forget, we do have this fan that we need to plug in. We're gonna plug that in right over here, uh, right behind the ethernet port or between the ethernet ports, I guess is a better way to say that. So we'll just go ahead and plug this in like so. So that way you can kind of see what's going on there. And uh, basically at this point, we're ready to go. We can go ahead and put this back on. Be careful. Sometimes I've had issue with this cable uh, for the fan trying to poke out the back and getting pinched. So just make sure that's tucked in there uh, nice and neatly like so. Click everything into place and then we can put the five screws back in. I'm not gonna bore you with that. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to uh, actually using the Raspad 3. So there you go. There's how easy it is to put together the Raspad 3 uh, with your own Raspberry Pi 4, uh, whether it's a you know a two gig, a four gig, an eight gig, whatever the case is, uh, very, very simple to put together. They put a lot of thought into that process to make it very, very simple. So with that said, uh, let's actually take a look at a few different examples of how you might use the Raspad 3. Okay, so here we are where we've got the back on here. Uh, next thing I wanna do is plug in the barrel jack uh, so we've got power like so, and then let's plug in our, our 128 gig uh, USB plug right over here on the side, oops, upside down, like so. And then over here on the right side, towards the back, there's a power button. So let's go ahead and press and hold that for a couple of seconds. And then our screen should come on and hopefully we'll boot right into our operating system. There we go. Oh, that is a Raspberry Pi 4 eight gig. I thought that was a four gig. Uh, Cool, extra little surprise there. Uh, it looks like we're booting up. We're gonna give this just a second to do its thing. There we go. Welcome to Raspbian 10. 
and hey, there's Retro Pi. So uh, I actually set this up the other day so that uh, if I wanted to, I could kind of take this with me wherever, as long as I've got, uh, you know, just a little uh, USB controller here. I've actually got a couple of these, uh, but obviously for the sake of uh, this, I'm only gonna have one. So we'll go ahead and let this finish booting up. And there's Emulation Station booting up. And of course, a ton of games on here. Uh, I definitely encourage you to uh, procure your ROMs uh, legally to the best of your ability. So let's go ahead, come into here. Of course, anytime I do one of these, I, I always love to go to uh, Super Mario Kart, uh, just so we can kind of see. You can see this is going very, very fast. Uh, super, uh, got to do my, my, uh, Alphabet backwards here, there is Super Mario Kart USA. Let's just go do a quick run through this. Hopefully uh, the, uh, the reflection here won't be too bad once the game is actually going. All right, just like it used to be on the old school Nintendo. All right, there we go. So let's press start. One player game, Mario Kart GP, 50cc. That looks great. Gonna go with my man Toad. Been using Toad since I was about 12 or 13. Uh, so let's go ahead and just jump into here. We'll give you a, just a quick demo on how easy it is to run Emulation Station or RetroPie uh, on this device. Of course, all of your, uh, whatever operating systems you run are going to be dependent on the Raspberry Pi you put in here. Um, so uh, so we're not really gaining anything from putting this in the Raspad other than um, uh, portability, man. Being able to take this anywhere in the car, uh, to to just wherever you're going to be hanging out for a while, uh, and and just being able to game on the go with your with your retro Pi setup in a in a super portable platform like this uh, can't hardly beat this. Okay, so now let's say we've uh, had enough gaming. We're tired of gaming. We don't want to do any more gaming. So what we're going to do? We'll just come over to here. Scroll all the way down to quit. Uh, we're gonna go to shutdown system. We're gonna say yes, really shut down. And then once this is done, I can go ahead and unplug uh, my controller there. Toss that aside. Cool, it's off. Now, here's the thing, right? It's not fully off. What you'll wanna do is reach over to the side and make sure you press and hold that. Little pop there. I don't know if you could hear that with my microphone, but there's a little pop letting you know that it's fully shut down and the fans ha have officially stopped as well. So then we'll just take this out. That is our, our 128 gig uh, my, or USB that we were using for gaming. Here I've got a 64 gig uh, micro SD card that I'm just going to pop in over here like so. And then just to make things a little bit easier, uh, I've just got a, a wireless adapter over here for a, uh, for a keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in, turn it on. There we go, things are booting up. Okay, so here we are on our OMSC uh, dashboard here. Let's go into videos, uh, let's go into files, uh, season 14, sure, why not? Hey, look, there's some Family Guy. And just like that, now we're watching Family Guy on the go. Of course, right now I'm plugged in uh, for power, but uh, you could absolutely, once your battery is charged, unplug this and take this with you on the go anywhere you want to go. Okay, so now let's say we are all done with our media consumption. We don't wanna do this anymore. Uh, we can just kind of back out of here and shut things down. I'm gonna power off the system, do that the appropriate way, right? And again, we wanna make sure that we press and hold that power button just to make sure everything's turned off completely. Then we can take our uh, OMSC micro SD card out and then we'll throw in another micro SD card here it just has a desktop operating system on it. So let's go ahead, power that on. Okay, so here we are on our dashboard, our desktop, whatever you want to call it. So let's just go ahead and uh, open up. Come on, there we go, just like so. Got a second. And then if we wanted to, we could then manage or monitor, uh, say our 3D print from basically wherever on our Raspberry Pi tablet here. We can come over here to control and there it is. And if I reach over here, uh, you can actually see me moving around our little lawyer cat 3D print. Um, but of course, uh, once you're in here, you know, you can monitor everything that you wanna do, uh, you know, start new prints, stop prints, manage everything uh, pretty simply, uh, just with, through a browser on your Raspad 3.
So there are some basic examples of how you might use the Raspad 3 uh, to whether it's gaming, media, uh, monitoring your 3D printer, Really, the, the sky's the limit as far as what you can do with this. If you can put it on a Raspberry Pi, uh, you can use the Raspad 3 to, to accent that and make it even more functional. So definitely check out uh, the Raspad 3. We'll have links to everything in the description down below if you wanna check one of these out for yourself. I really do wanna thank you guys for your time today, as well as continued support on the channel. It really does mean a lot to me. So thank you guys so much. Um, but again, let's wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.